Hey everybody, Jillian here with a brand new video. Today I want to show you three ways to use the stencil that's included with the Grace and Gratitude kit from Illustrated Faith and Day Spring. So in my last video, I gave you a quick peek at what is inside the Gratitude Documented Devotional Kit that coordinates with this book, 100 Days of Grace and Gratitude. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this Acorn Fetty stencil that Elaine Davis designed, and it's just so fun. I, like I said in my last video, have really come to love using stencils this year once I learned how to best to use them. And so I wanted to share a few ways that you could use this stencil if you were to pick up this devotional kit. So here's a peek at the stencil. We've got uh, just some really adorable acorns on there with some little dashes or um, art marks that'd be really fun to add to a journaling page. So I've got a few different mediums here. The first I'm going to show you how to use is acrylic paint. And I'm simply going to use a baby wipe to put down the acrylic paint through this stencil. Now, this color is brick. It's one of the Target Handmade Modern paints. And my original frustrations with using stencils stemmed from trying to use them with acrylic paint. Um, I just do not have the best experience using them. I don't get the crispest image when I use acrylic paints with stencils. So I'm going to show you a little workaround that I learned. So I'm going to take a baby wipe, I've got it balled up here, and just dab it into the paint that is left on the cap of the bottle, and then just dab it in an up and down motion over the top of the stencil. I would really recommend, if you're new to stenciling, um, taping them in place with some washi tape, that way it's um, easy to pick it up and it won't ruin your page or anything like that, um, since washi has a pretty forgiving adhesive. And I am just, like I said, tapping the acrylic paint over the stencil. I have picked up a minimal amount with the baby wipe because I don't want it to get too gloppy and gloopy and seep underneath the stencil. So you can see here it worked. I didn't get a very crisp image. They're very abstract acorns. That's okay with me. When I stencil, I typically do it um, first on my page to create like a base layer and then I build on top of that. So if that is how you plan to use this stencil, then don't worry about getting a perfect crisp image. Sometimes just the idea of, um, of what's underneath there is enough. And this is all about having fun and trying new things and getting messy and creative and perfection is not the goal here. If you do want to point out that they are in fact acorns once the paint is dry, you can take a pen, I'm using the Illustrated Faith .35 pen here, placing the stencil on top of where I originally had it, using my pen to kind of trace the acorn shape with the pencil so that when I lift the stencil up, it's a little easier to tell what they are. I would recommend waiting until your paint is dry so that you don't gunk up the tip of your pen. <laughs> Next, I'm going to use some Distress Ink. This is a Distress Ink Oxide in the color Fossilized Amber. And typically, I use an ink blending tool like this to get the ink down on top of the stencil. In a circular motion, you just very gently rub it over the stencil. When you lift it up, it is probably the best impression that I'm going to get today. But if you don't have a mini ink blending tool like this, you could very easily use a drier baby wipe. A dry baby wipe, I should say. So I'm going to use a fresh one. It's a little too moist. And just dab it onto the ink pad just like I did with the ink blending tool. And again, in a circular motion, I'm going to go over the stencil. Now I think it would be a little bit better if you used a more dry baby wipe because there'd be less water like seeping under the stencil and you'd get a little bit of a crisper image. But I'm totally fine with how this came out. I still think that this looks really cool. It's pretty abstract, just like the acrylic paint, but I really like the soft edges and, um, how, and how messy it is. I, I actually do really like this look. You could use this with Distress Ink, with a pigment ink, with a dye ink. You do not have to have the exact tools that I'm using today. Just Play with what you have and see how it works. Next up, I'm going to use this piece of plastic packaging with some Ranger texture paste, and I'm gonna grab a palette knife and some paint. So I'm gonna take out 
the texture paste. Mine is a little bit dried out and put some down on this plastic packaging. You don't need a ton of this. I just wanted to make sure I had enough <laughs> since I'm going to add paint to it. And I'm gonna use this Deep Sea, again, Target paint. I pulled these out um, to coordinate with the Grace and Gratitude book. If you wanna see everything that I pulled to coordinate with this project, I'll go ahead and link that video if you guys wanna check it out. I'm using a separate palette knife here to get the paint down on the plastic packaging. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and, and close that up. The texture paste does dry out pretty easily, so when you're not using it, I recommend um, closing the jar as soon as you're done getting it out. Next, this is the really fun part. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix the texture paste with the acrylic paint and just make sure it's nice and combined and it's this beautiful, deep teal color. This is a lot on the knife. I do not recommend putting that much through the stencil. Instead, I'm going to pick up just a little roll, Bob Ross style, a little roll of paint on the edge there and then take this through the stencil. I really recommend using some washi tape if you want to try this method because when I went um, back to the plastic packaging to pick up some more texture paste, I had to let go of the stencil. So if you want to make sure you're getting a crisp image without having this stencil move, then I really recommend using the washi tape to hold it in place. So I'm going to carefully remove the stencil and then there you go. It's very difficult to see on camera, but there is some dimension here. So this is not a flat medium. It's going to provide some dimension and bulk to your pages if you were to use this medium. If you do use texture paste, make sure you clean your tools right away. I would start by cleaning the stencil first since it, it has the thinnest layer of texture paste on there. I'm using a baby wipe for all of my cleanup. You could also use some, uh, some warm water and some like hand soap if you wanted to, if you had a sink handy and you wanted to clean this. I'm making sure to flip over um, the stencil and clean both sides. And I'm getting it all over my hands in the process. So now that I have the stencil clean, I'm going to go ahead and clean my next tool, the palette knife. And then the good thing about the plastic packaging is you can just throw that away. You don't have to worry about cleaning it. Look at those messy hands. But I guess messy equals fun, right? <laughs> While I have the texture paste out, I'm gonna show you a bonus way to use it since the first application with the acrylic paint was kind of a dud. I don't need the plastic packaging for this since I'm not planning on mixing any color with it, but I'm gonna take just the plain white texture paste and scrape it through with a different palette knife again, scrape it through this stencil here. Now it's difficult to tell on camera because it's white texture paste on a piece of white cardstock but I'm going to go ahead and clean my stencil off first and then hit this with my heat tool to help speed up the drying process. And then I thought it would be fun to kind of do a wash over the top of the dry texture paste. Now, I'm gonna take this plastic packaging I had previously used with the Distress Ink and I'm gonna use the plastic packaging technique or the smushing technique. I've shared this before on my channel here and I am just dabbing down the Distress Ink onto the packaging, mixing it with some water to help it move around and then smushing it onto the texture paste. So you can see here that the texture paste I've pushed through this stencil is almost resisting the Distress Ink. It's gonna look a lot better when I dry it, but this is just a fun way to get messy, to pull out what you have, to experiment with new things. And now I'm gonna do a wash using the Illustrated Faith watercolors here. So you can see that it really makes the white texture paste um, kind of pop out. I'm hitting it again with my heat tool to help speed up the drying process and this is just a really really fun technique. I'm looking forward to playing with each one as time permits as I work through the 100 Days of Grace and Gratitude devotional journal. So we've got the acrylic paint, the distress inks, and then the texture paste in the middle. And that's going to do it for me. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. I would love for you guys to participate in Gratitude Documented with us. If you are interested in checking out the kit, I've got everything linked in the video description below. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon.